Hey guys, what's up? Back for some more Hyrule Warriors. This is the Water Temple stage, and I'm using Sheik for this one. Who I have a blast using Sheik. Um, she's just fast and attacks. She mixes it up with the dagger, uh, throwing daggers and uh, her harp. And I'm hoping this is indicative of. I know the weapon will be different, but I'm hoping that once I unlock Princess Zelda, that uh, the speed remains intact because. Playing as Sheik, it's just probably the most fast-paced character in the game, I think. Uh, just, you know, you got Impa who's like the heavy hitter, uh, Darunia is a heavy hitter. Link's kind of in between being a heavy hitter and being fast, but he's not, doesn't feel like he's as fast as Sheik is, so hopefully once, uh, like I said, once I get Zelda unlocked, then that quickness transfers over to her, too. But all in all, uh, so far all the characters feel different enough. Um, I mean, the sword wielders that I have unlocked all feel different. Like, Impa doesn't feel like Link. And uh, I haven't really played as Volga yet. Volga, Volga, Volga. I don't know. Uh, but I'm sure he doesn't play like the other two. And then uh, Lana's pretty interesting to use. C is a lot of fun with her whip scepter thing. So right now, all the characters are pretty, uh, pretty enjoyable to use. Variety being the spice of life. Uh, but you know, we'll see how it goes. I try them out in free mode and see how they feel and how they stack up compared to what I am used to so far. But you know, we still got a long ways to go to unlock some more characters. There is one that I'm not real keen on at the moment. Um, but I'll discuss that when it, it comes up in a video. And uh, maybe by then I'll have used the character a little bit more and my opinion will change. But where it stands right now, there is one character that I'm kind of like, eh, on. But all in all, so far everything's kind of And, I mean, the combat, the combos are basically the same for each character, just how they uh, interact is quite different, so. Plus, this is a cool, strong attack. She plays the different uh, temple songs that you learn in the Ocarina of Time, and they give her different power-ups. And... If you don't know why I'm calling Sheik her, just because you've been under a rock for the last 10 years or however long it's been since Ocarina of Time came out, Sheik is Zelda. <laughs> okay, and anybody that watches these, and there's not too many, uh, there's not a big draw for this game, but I'm having fun playing it and I'm having fun making videos and nerding all over my love of the Zelda franchise. But. Is it Ocarina of Time or Ocarina of Time? Because I've heard it pronounced both ways, and I've said Ocarina for years, forever. But I see YouTube videos where people call it Ocarina, but I also see YouTube videos where they pronounce it Ocarina, so... I don't know. I guess I could Google that shit and find out what the real the right pronunciation is, but... Uh, I just don't feel like it. i seen some discussion about a couple things I want to touch upon in this video. I was reading some forums and a couple popular discussions other than what I mentioned about the character designs in the last video is uh, whether or not like this would ever take place in the canon. Like if they'd find a way to stick it into the timeline. I really kind of hope they don't um, just because Let's be honest, as much as I love the Zelda franchise, the timeline's pretty convoluted to begin with, and kind of a hot mess, um, because I think they went for their original intentions were it was going to be like a legend where it's never told the same way twice, but there was going to be some basic elements that always transferred over into the story, and then somewhere along the lines they, decide, they decided to make, put them into a sequence, and they're just trying to glue them the better glued them together the best that they can. 
Uh, it makes sense to an extent, but it's still a hot mess. But, you know, I would like to see this stay its own thing and maybe get a sequel. I wouldn't be opposed to that if they incorporate maybe more... It seems like from what I'm playing in this, there's a lot of Ocarina of Time characters, Twilight Princess characters, and uh, Skyward Sword characters and scenarios from those three games. So I think it might be cool if they, uh, like if they made a sequel, if they in like encompassed maybe the Hyrule and the situations that were brought up with like the original Legend of Zelda, uh, the Adventure of Link and A Link to the Past. That'd be kind of neat. And then you could throw in some of the bot. Uh, Zelda 2, I know, is kind of divisive. I like Zelda 2. It, it was... I don't know, people bitch because it, it's a side-scroller. But uh, at the time, I mean, there was not really a precedent that the sequel had to be an overhead, top-down type of game. You know? So I, I kind of think that's like a weak argument. It'd be different if there was like... 40 Zelda games and then all of a sudden the side-scroller came out like that, but... I mean, it's hard as shit, don't get me wrong. But, uh... All in all, I like it. But some of those bosses are really... I think if they would update them and put them in a game like this, I think those bosses would be very... imposing. Especially, uh... Horsehead and Barbus. And the Thunderbird. Especially, uh... Those three in particular, because... They're big in that game. So, like, in the Thunderbird, you could make it huge in this game. And then maybe, uh... Some of the minions from those games have them be, like, your trash mobs in this one. Like, the, uh... Oh, I forget what they're called in the Adventure Link, the alligator guys with the axes that everybody hates that were in Death Mountain. Or, uh... Those weird little coyote-looking dudes that were in the palaces that... You know what I'm talking about. They just never ended. And then you, your elites could be like the... The Iron Knuckles and, uh... All those bear-looking guys. I can't remember the name of the enemies in Zelda 2 for some reason. And then, uh, you know, you could have enemies from the first game, like the Like Likes or uh, Octoroks. I don't, I haven't come across any Octoroks in this game yet. Or um, you have those, the traps. Like when you walk into a room here, instead of having the Beemos, have those spiky traps that came at you. Uh, and, oh, and Gleok. Gleok was such an awesome boss in that first game, and he's never come back. Tell me that wouldn't be awesome, fighting a big three, four-headed dragon like that, you know? Uh, he played a big part in the uh, cartoon, but he just never came back after that first game. And I mean, he had the uh, Trinix in A Link to the Past, but that wasn't Gleok. That was a turtle that didn't really attack you the same way as Gleok did. Uh, he was just this big badass dragon, you know? Or, uh... Or some other bosses from the first game. We had Gleok, Manhandlo, they brought him back in this game. Uh, the Dodongos, they were in this game. That dragon, I can't remember the other dragon, there was just a, like a regular stereotypical kind of like... Uh, horned dragon. It was the boss of the first palace. Or Labyrinth, I keep calling them Palace. I'm trying to think what other bosses are worth. The Moldorms, but they kind of pop up here and there throughout the franchise. But you could have, like... In some of those levels in the first few games would be uh, pretty cool to see them updated into a game like this. Like, kind of lay them out sort of similar. Like, you had that brown kind of autumnish dead forest in the western part of the map in the first Zelda game. You had the cemetery. Uh, oh, the centaurs! Uh, the centaurs from the first game. That'd be cool to see them come back. Uh, completely forgot about them. What else did you have in that first game? First game, environments weren't too varied. It was basically just 
green and brown versions of the same thing. The second game, you could bring in uh, maybe the graveyard with the, uh, the invisible Demoas. Or uh, the swamps. You had the swamps in the second game. Or even like one of the palaces could be a level of uh, the Great Palace or something like that. Or Parappa, since that was the first palace you went to. And then uh, if you incorporate Link to the Past, you know, you could have elements from the Dark World. There's some cool stuff there with um, the first palace in the Dark World that you go to where the monkey has to help let you in. The uh, Turtle Rock was kind of meh of a palace. Um, I mean, visually, from the outside. I don't think it would be too exciting. Uh, the palace that was in what would be the Dark World version of the Lost Woods would be cool. Because you had uh, all those little skulls and stuff that you went into and the holes that you fell down into to get through the different parts of the, the maze and things like that. Or even uh, the Thief's Den with uh, Blind as the boss. I mean, there's some really cool designs in those first three games that never opened. Some of them came back, you know, but a lot of them didn't. And seeing those updated into like a modern game and you know they don't even have to be thrown into a Zelda proper they could just encompass those three games into another Hyrule Warriors and that'd be pretty cool they could even take the core of what was started here maybe and just expand upon that story and have them open up rifts or whatever into those time periods of the franchise but uh, yeah I don't I don't really want to see too much of this crossover into the main series uh, they feel different enough that I think they can stand on their own separately. I did read that uh, the cutscenes kind of inspired the team that's working on Zelda U. And I'm fine with that because the cutscenes in this game are phenomenal. Uh, there's some really good ones that they have here and there. But, um, like, as far as. Like the core elements of the gameplay, I mean, I, I don't see why that needs to be in a regular Zelda title. Ah, and there was something else. Maybe that was it. I can't remember. Kind of went off on that for a minute. And I, maybe I got everything I talked about. But something else I want to discuss doesn't really have a lot to do with Hyrule Warriors, but I was thinking about this because I was going through Zelda games for a separate video series I'm going to be doing. And, uh, you know, back in the beginnings of the franchise, you know, you had The Legend of Zelda, and you had Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, which was a direct sequel to the original Zelda game. Then A Link to the Past came out and had nothing to do with those two games. And Link's Awakening was a direct sequel to Link to the Past. And Majora's Mask was a direct sequel to the child timeline of Ocarina of Time. And then there's a couple others that I think are direct sequels. Uh, like Wind Waker got some sequels on the 3DS. Now, I, I could be wrong about those because I haven't played them, but I mean, they have the same art style. I'm assuming they're the same Link and Zelda. Maybe, maybe not. Um, I'd have to brush up on my trivia there for that one. So, but I would like to see a direct sequel to Twilight Princess because and maybe I'm kind of biased towards it because I absolutely love that game. But there is a very rich lore that was started there in Twilight Princess with the Twilight Realm. And there were some really great characters in that game that I would like to see expanded upon outside of poorly written fanfiction. And I think if done correctly, they could make a really good sequel to that game and incorporate the Twilight Realm and Midna and all those characters again. Uh, maybe not necessarily Vant, you could have a different antagonist, or, but somehow find a way to bring those two worlds together again because I think that would be, that would tickle my inner fanboy. Uh, 
I was... I don't want to say I was disappointed with how Twilight Princess ended. I think it ended perfectly for what that game was trying to accomplish narratively. But I do... It did leave me wanting more with those characters because they were so well fleshed out and the story of that game was done very well um, that I would greatly appreciate seeing that built upon for a sequel and I don't not that I don't want them to keep doing what they're doing but I think I'm not alone in wanting to see what what happens after the dust has settled and maybe a couple years go by, you know. And, I mean, there's precedence for it. They've done a direct sequel for previous games, so I don't see why they couldn't uh, try to figure out something there for that that story. I don't know. Because there's, there's a lot of uh, memorable characters in Twilight Princess. Russell, obviously Midna, uh, Talma, uh, even the inhabitants of Orton Village, uh, Maribo, uh, Ilya, Colin, that was Russell's son, Renato. Uh, who was the... Who was the Zora? Prince Rollis. Uh, you kind of had a... There was kind of a sad side story with him and Queen Rotella. Uh, you had the members of the Resistance, which, I mean... The core of that being Russell and Talma. But then, you know, they had the Light Spirits, too. That was never really... I don't know if that gets brought up in Skyward Sword or anything, but it'd be cool to see them delve into that a little bit more. Uh, there could be... That could be the... You know, they could somehow maybe work that as the core of the story or something. Maybe, I guess. But, I mean, there's... I feel like there's... What they established with that is rich enough that they could expand upon it a little bit further and flesh out some of that world a little bit more, you know. So, we'll, you know, we'll see. Maybe they'll surprise me, and they will. Maybe they won't. Uh, no harm either way, I guess. With whatever they do. Plus, man, it'd be cool to, if they finally confirm the hero spirits. Hero of Time. Well, I guess he is the Hero of Time, but at any rate, you know, I still think it'd just be a way to really expand upon it and bring it further. And here we're kind of getting a glimpse of the playstyle Zelda, I'm assuming, will have fighting her as a boss, her in quotes, because uh, we know this isn't actually Zelda. I hope I get to do that. Far different than the uh, battle was possessed Zelda and Twilight Princess. And if you're watching this, I'm going to assume you've played some Zelda games, I hope, so they're if you haven't, I apologize if I spoil anything for you in those games, but a lot of them have been out for quite a number of years, so I think we've passed the point of spoiling the story for you. Man, that better be attack, an attack that she can unlock. This game start uh, doing the dodges a little bit more often and while you're locked on this game can make you dizzy real quick but it's fast paced so, I mean that's the one thing that I, I'm enjoying about it it's all the combat in the proper games it's like I said before it's not bad per se it's but it's not fast paced like this you know uh, this is a little bit more uh, I don't want to say Devil May Cry-ish, but I mean, it's got that heavy action 3D brawler feel to it, you know, which I'm more, I mean, it is an action-y 3D brawler, but still, you know. Oh, this guy again.
That whole mouth eye thing still freaks me out. Ugh. I do like her design. She's looks like she's ready for battle, but she's still kind of regal. So, but we're gonna wrap this up at the end of this cutscene, and then we'll continue on. That's the end of these quests for them. So, we'll move on to somebody else in the next one. But until then, I want to thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. All right, have a good one, guys.